Last night, it ain't no yep. point in uh, holding no holding no uh, punches. All right, bro. We both picked the Mavericks. He picked in the six. I picked in the seven. Did you had the Mavericks at the beginning of the series, or did you pick Boston? So, I'm a real big Luka guy. So I wanted the Mavericks to win, but I don't. I never thought that. Well, else I didn't think they could beat the Celtics, but I just know I picked the Celtics to win, but I want the Mavericks to win. Pretty much. And I did the exact opposite. I picked the Mavericks to win, knowing the Celtics was going to win. Like okay. I. Okay. Watching the Celtics it's play, it was just like, bro, they just got too much pause. Like, it's not too much you're going to be able to do with them. And that's a pause, too. But the Mavericks simply cannot guard them. Right. And that is what's scaring me. Ish, you were super high on the Mavericks coming into yeah. the series. But I will cut some slack for you because you said it was going to take some historic shit from Luka and Kyrie. Yeah. Luka is being somewhat of Luka. I would say he needs to cut down on the turnovers and yeah. his – Shot selection hasn't been the best, but Kyrie is really where yeah. we need to focus to start off. What's going on with Kyrie? One thousand percent. We talked about it a little bit just before the show started. Like I'm like niggas know I'm the Kyrie guy. Like, mm -hmm. I, no, it, no matter who the substance, not the substance, whoever the Mavs play coming out like the West, I was gonna pick them because I love Luca. I love Kyrie. Mm -hmm. But like you said, Luca's been playing well, like it, especially in spurts. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, we dubbed him certified two year. It's been spurts where he's just throwing stuff up at the rim. And it's falling like over great defense, bad footwork. It really don't matter. Kyrie, like it's such it's such a weird thing because he definitely looks sped up. Yeah, one thousand percent with the way the Matt, the Celtics are playing, they're gonna switch everything. They're not gonna give you any advantages. If they do, they're gonna hard edge before getting back to you. But even the shots that look like oh yeah, this is a Kyrie shot, got to fifteen feet, bumps you off, fade. It just looks a little. He just doesn't look comfortable. Mm -hmm. Stunner, what do you think that is? Yeah, I think. Talking to the top I don't, of the right, Paul. I, I, I don't think the biggest problem with the Mavs, Paul, is Kyrie. <laughs> I was just so, uh, so used to it. It's like Kurt. <laughs> I, I, I shout out Kurt, Kurt. that bitch from the bottom. That's crazy. <laughs> okay, stop. That's the last one. <laughs> oh, my God. No ditty, man. No ditty, man. <laughs> All right. So, All right, so Kyrie. I don't think the biggest problem with the Mavericks is Kyrie. Okay. I think the biggest problem is the fact that their role players like Derrick Jones Jr., P.J. Washington is not giving them nothing from three, and that's yeah. affecting the space that Kyrie has to work in. Mm -hmm. Like when people say – like I was having this argument the other day when people say that Kyrie is the most skilled player in the NBA. Like, yeah, it's pretty. Kyrie is hella skilled. I think Luka is more skilled than Kyrie because Luka can score in a more various ways to me. Simply because Luca doesn't need a lot of space to get to get his game off. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the Boston Celtics, pause, are a very long team, mm -hmm. and they're they're bothering Kyrie with that with their length. Pause. Come on. But we can just put one on this side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, just pause. We'll put an overarching <laughs> pause, pause up there. <laughs> but yeah, I think the the Celtics' length and how well they play defense as a team mm -hmm. is bothering the Mavericks more than more so than the Timberwolves did because the Timberwolves had. A lot of great one on one defenders or a couple great one on one defenders and good rim protection, but mm. they didn't they weren't well connected as a team in that Agreed. series. And I feel right. like that's showing when they're how they're guarding Kyrie, because Luca's gonna Luca's gonna be Luke at the end of the day. He's mm. gonna get his twenty five to thirty. If his teammates are knocking out shots, he's gonna get at least seven, eight assists and he's gonna get his rebounds. But Kyrie needs more space to play in. Yeah, and I hate God, I hate to say it because I hate this guy, but the Celtics are Far more prepared than Timberwolves were. Yeah. Whether far. that is having the seven, eight days, whatever they did to, like, watch the mm -hmm. games or Joe Mazzula being a weirdo. That's why I, I really don't like him because he's so, like. <laughs> that's, like that's a like, weird-ass nigga, bro. Yo, I'm just not answer the fucking question, I'm, yeah, See, I'm not big on press. Like, like, if you give a politically correct answer at your press conference, I don't care. But, like, some of the stuff Joe Mazzula be saying. Like, like, didn't nobody ask you about that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> But they 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 are definitely more prepared in what they're uh, what they're cool giving up, yeah, and what they absolutely will not give up under Agreed. any circumstances. I, I think we're seeing what a what a experienced team looks like in a deep playoff run. Yeah. What Derek Lively was able to do as a rookie is not normal to be right. able to do in right. a conference final series. But the Wolves haven't been there. The Mavericks haven't. Uh, had only been there once, but with a completely different roster. So I believe that they got a little bit of a break, per se, with the Timberwolves, and now they're seeing a team that's been there before. Right. I, Derek Lively wouldn't have looked like that against Denver. And 
that is what I think, besides Kyrie, is their biggest issue, is their pick and roll isn't generating the offense it has right, been. Right. And that points to Stunner's point about P.J. Washington and Derrick Jones Jr. not shooting the ball as well. They're not getting the open shots that they were, they were getting in the first three uh, rounds. And P.J. isn't a great wing shooter. He's a corner shooter. Right. And Derrick Jones Jr. doesn't shoot the ball well from the left side of the court. He's a right side of the court shooter. So it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of angles you can prevent them from getting to from getting those shots. And as that's affecting their whole offense. Right. What the adjustment I think Jason Kidd should make is start to bring um, Hardy and Tim Hardaway Jr. In off the bench. Yeah. Um, I know when we get into these finals, it's not it, – when we get into these games, it's not big adjustments you can make because you only, your eight, rotation only seven, eight deep, mm -hmm. and they've seen every move you going to do, think about doing, and right. going to think, think about doing. Right. So it's only so much you can do. But I think the adjustment is just to bring more shooters on the court and yeah. try to score with them because you can't stop them. Yeah. And I think that's what they've shown for two, day, two games is you're not going to stop them. So yeah. it's to – that point, do you think they should focus more or so on stopping Boston or just try to get their offense going and it's, see if that's how they can do it? It's crazy because I, like, it's crazy because I think the adjustment might be the opposite. Mm -hmm. Because what you've seen is, because especially game two, I noticed this for a little stretch, usually they'll keep one big on the court mm -hmm. or, you know, yeah, they'll usually keep one big on the court between uh, Gaffer, Lively, sometimes Cleveland cool. now that he's yeah. back. But for a little stretch there, they went two bigs mm -hmm. just to try to counter the size for Boston. So I think what they're going to do, especially going into game three, is I think they're going to change their pick and roll to what a lot of what they ran earlier in the year. A lot of Spain pick and roll to counter the teams that are already trying to pre-switch. Because that's what you're seeing is we're either going to switch or we're going to hedge so hard and keep a body on you that it's like the screen was never sent. So I think they're going to start Spain pick and roll, double pick and roll, a lot of staggers. And I would not be, I wouldn't be surprised if – they got more Luka and Kyrie both off the ball. Okay. Because there was a stretch where Luka, you know, of course, he's not the off the ball nigga. But like, mm. he's not going to run around and right. come off screens. But there was a stretch where he got off the ball, got a post, and then he ran out to the corner, got a three. I can't remember if he made it or not. But, like, you have to supplement the ball movement somehow. Yeah. Because your offense can't be Luka make the best decision every time down anymore because sometimes the best decision is just like, I'm for the ISO. And you can't do that for six minutes Facts. in the finals against a great defense. Facts. So I think you may see them supplement that with more more and more straight sets. Okay. Less feel offense, less one-on-one -on -one bag work, and more attack, attack, get the rotations, drive and kick, and more like – kind of like how the Celtics are playing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Stunner, what would your adjustment be for the Mavericks? You want me to be honest? Yeah. I don't think the Mavericks have an adjustment. Okay. That's fine. I think – the the only way the Mavericks can come back in this series is if, is if Kyrie taps into that bag and just decides, okay, yeah. I'm going to be the second best player on the court, because Luke is going to be the Luke has been the first best player on the court. He's been the he's been who Luke is, but Kyrie has to tap into that bag. And to go back to your question about whether they should go offense or defense, I think the Mavericks have the I think the Mavericks have been going trying to go defense, mm -hmm. and they can't stop them. PJ Washington can't st stay in front of Tatum. Uh, Derrick Jones Jr. can't stay in front of Brown. And they're having to send too much help, which is leaving the corners open. I think Drew is having a historic shooting shooting season from the corner, like yeah. at sixty percent or something. Mm. So, the only adjustment that I would say, like throwing throwing a rock into the ocean, would be to put Tim Hardaway Jr. in the game just to get some more shooting mm -hmm. out there. Because, yeah. and if that's your adjustment, you don't really got an adjustment. Exactly. Like, Fact. That's, that's, and that's say, just honest. For and me. I'll say what everybody's thinking, man. The Celtics play like some nerds, bro. I hate watching. <laughs> that. The Celtics, the Celtics, I say somebody on Twitter say the Celtics play like. The perfect five out team on, on Pro Am. Yeah, yo, it's the, yo, like, it's the most fun. For real, no, they for play real. Like dweebs. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. It's high. not fair. It's kind of unfair. Listen, I'm a Spurs <laughs> fan, so I was watching. I was like, is this what niggas used to think? Like, yeah. it's like niggas get mad at yeah. me. Like, I'm Literally. watching. I'm like, watch, watch Juwan in the dunker spot. Like, I'm getting <laughs> mad. Crazy. Like, what is he doing, bro? Watch out. Like, these niggas playing crazy. like nerds, bro. I hate that. I, shit. I said yesterday in the chat every. Four, um, every four out of five possessions, they get a good shot. Yeah. Like oh. a damn near great shot. They play like, like wide open. They play like it's no bitches and, at the game. And, <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's it's why nothing impressive. <laughs> that's why I think the series might be over in five games. I think game three is going to say a lot. Yeah. I, what 
Because I do think Kyrie can hit a switch. And I think if Kyrie is averaging, what, 16, 16, 16 a game right now? 16, yeah. If Kyrie can take that 16 over the first two to over the next four, what, what's that, seven, five, over the next five games and take that to 27 yeah. to 30, yeah. this series can flip. Right. But he has to do it. He's just got to be better. And that's the scary part of it. That's why it's hard to have these conversations later yeah. in the season because it's not much we can say other than Kyrie just got to beat Kyrie that we know. Right. But what I was saying the ish is – he, the Celtics are making him uncomfortable because Drew is all up in his shit paws and Derek White is coming and doing the same thing. Then Jalen Brown is coming and doing the same thing. So he can't get comfortable. So the second he gets a wide open three pointer, it's rushed because it's his first open shot in five minutes. It's right. his first good shot in seven minutes. And that is throwing his game off. As yeah. you said, I hate that Kyrie is the most skilled player ever argument. That's a really dumbass argument to me, in my opinion, because of what we're seeing now. When Kyrie is faced with a defender that is bigger than him and as quick as him, he struggled. And that's been this way his whole career. It's, when he was younger, it wasn't as often because he was so quick when he was younger. Right. But if you remember that 22 Boston series from a couple years ago when they got swept, he was having the same issues yeah. because he has the issue with quick, long defenders. Right. So, unfortunately, I don't – think there's much the Mavericks can do. But we can jump into the Celtics and talk about what they have done well. Yeah. First off, I want to start off with KP. Because right. I didn't think KP was going to be this big of a X factor for them. Right. I think KP turned this series from a five, six, seven game series to a five game series. Right. right. How do y'all feel about KP? I'm still not sure. I'm still not sure. He did get go out last uh, game with the four, in the fourth quarter, so I he think, may not be ready for I think for his defense has been crazy especially coming from the Indiana series and the series before that, where it really looked like, oh, yeah, you can score on the Celtics. Like, you can get to the rim. You can finish strong. You've definitely seen a couple of times. And, listen, I don't know what J.K.'s saying in there, but if I see one more Maxi Cleaver coast to coast, I'm, I'm going to throw some shit at the screen. Like, the, it's just certain times you see them go right to him. It's very frustrating, but he's been a crazy presence. I think Real his, quick, I want to I cut that off because – during the game yesterday, they were interviewing P.J. Washington during yeah. the no, timeout. No, P.J., I understand. No, and that's Johnson what I'm saying. Yeah. Was What I was saying was he said that he wanted P.J. to push. Yeah. So I'm assuming that when Cleveland was in the game, he yeah. was serving that role for P.J., yeah. which doesn't make sense. Right. But I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, no, I th- that's, P.J., I don't mind because Giggy got a couple of photos that P.J. can actually finish in the lane a little bit. But his presence on defense has been just invaluable for them because it seems like – all the things that are usually dunks for the Mavericks are not anymore. Right? Yeah. All things that are usually layups, easy chippings are being met by one to two Celtics players every time. So we always talk about the like playoffs, winning playoff games, playoff series. You got to generate as many easy points as possible. Right. Mm-hmm. And like we talked about them playing better. I like again as a Spurs fan, I have free throw PTSD in the playoffs. Like, <laughs> like I, I, you miss a free throw, like I'm gonna start tweaking out. Yeah. And there was a long stretch where neither team could score, and they're just walking to the line, missing one, missing two, yeah. Yeah. missing one. Yeah, like I when think you're that was supposed to be yeah. extending the lead, you are just missing wide open free throws. That's why it's like, I don't know what adjustment they can make. Like JK go in there, like. Fam, y'all niggas just got a hoop. Like, yeah, like, I don't know what else I can do. You just got a hoop. You like, if, hoop. if you make your free throws, cut down on some turnovers, and Kyrie just play a little better, mm-hmm. it could be one It could be one, one easily heading back, but it's a make or miss league. Facts. You miss those shots, it, it's kind of GZ, so. Done to jump, sure. in, jump into the b- big two from Boston, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I think Jalen Brown had a better game one. I think last night they were both a little equal. Jason Tatum, I think, was an amazing play like, playmaker last night. Right. Um, attacking the paint, dishing out. The There's been a lot of conversation about who's better between the two of them. I want your opinion on Jason Tatum as a superstar. Like, what do you – do you feel like he's missing the gear? Because I feel like mentally he's not at the level the Lukas, the Jokic's, the Curry's, the Bronze have gotten to mentally. Yeah. But I think talent-wise he's there. What do you – how do you feel about Jason Tatum, the superstar? I think Jason Tatum is a top ten player in the league. As a matter of fact, I was just having this argument with my, my dad last night because he was saying that Jalen Brown is the best player on the Celtics, and I was like, they're not getting guarded the same way. Mm-hmm. And how we were just talking about how the Celtics play like it's no holes in the, in the mm-hmm. arena. They have no problem getting the best shot every time now. That's why I see everybody bashing Tatum, but I'm cool with how he's playing simply because he cool, he's cool with getting the best shot. He's not letting his ego take over, oh, I want to win finals MVP, or I want to do this, I want to do that. Because he was in the finals a couple of years ago, 
and it didn't work out. Yeah. So I feel like he's doing whatever it takes to win. So if y'all go, if every time I get two feet in the paint, y'all gonna throw three bodies at me, I'm just gonna throw it to the corner. I know I have a reliable shooter out there. Yeah. I know I can trust my teammates. I feel like that's the biggest thing. Like that's the biggest sign of maturity in Tatum's game to me is the fact that he's trusting his teammates. He doesn't feel the pressure to be the, the number one, like, okay, my shot not falling, I'm going to go grab 12 rebounds. I'm going to go get eight, nine, ten assists. Well, He's playing a very well around the game. And JB doing his thing, too. Mm-hmm. I just don't feel like they're getting guarded the same. And I don't feel like the masses pay attention to that. If Tatum is getting thrown double teams, I've seen a couple plays where Tatum had the ball on the, on the wing. Luka was going to play in the corner. He came all the way off the player in the corner to stand on the block. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's – a damn near a diamond around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you expect someone to just they yeah. I, and people just expect them to get to the rim every single time? No, I'm gonna hit the open. I'm gonna hit the open player. Right. Because if it's four people dedicated to me when I got the ball, as soon as I swing it to, as soon as I swing it to JB, he gets to go one on one. Yeah. And are they scrambling to get back? And that's how the Celtics get their offense. Mm-hmm. They've been a historic. I, the Celtics play a brand, a brand of basketball, kind of like how Houston used to play, but without the ISO. Yes. They either mm-hmm. want layups or threes. That's yeah. it. They don't yeah. really want anything in between. If they get something in between, they'll take it, of course, but they, that's not what they're looking for. No, nah, Jason Taylor hey, shot a mini at the end of the game. I was like, what that? the hell? I said, oh, my he, God. Yeah, he, he barely do that. do that anymore. Yeah, I said, where did that come from? <laughs> they are the 17-18 Rockets. That's a phenomenal comparison. See, but that's what But what Chris Paul and Tatum is just better than uh, what's the face of what's the face of Hardest. I mean, Chris Paul and Hart. JB and JT yeah, are better than yeah. Harden and, and, and uh, Chris their Paul. Role players are for and sure. And the role players yeah. are better. But, like, and probably better coach. I don't like Mike Dunn. Even with it being 2-0. I just – it's still things I see them just like, man, I don't like that. Like what, like when the Mavericks were going on that big run. Right. Like you got three straight threes up during that run. Nobody – like we didn't get all the way to the basket or we settled for the first three that we got. It feels like the Rockets is where yeah. it's like, man, the bottom's going to fall out yeah. eventually. But it happened and you couldn't take the lead. So You couldn't make – they couldn't make a three for the whole half and you went into the half down. Last night's first half told me a lot about – the series when the Mavericks couldn't make that run. Yeah. Because there's there's a couple types of runs in basketball. Yeah. There's the the out of this world run, the 20 0, 25 0. Sometimes it's a 12 0 run, right. and then you call they call a timeout, and then the other team goes on a 6 0 run, right. and then yeah. they call you call a timeout, and then you go on another yeah. 8 0 run. Right. And the Mavericks can't get that done. The yeah. Celtics got that done in the third quarter and blew the game open. Yeah. The Mavericks can get that first 8 0, 12 0, but once the timeout is called, they can't continue the rhythm that they're in. And he's he's quick with the timeout. And you gotta be in the finals because you can't. When you got a Kyrie, you can't let him see two shots yeah. going to win because that might be the third game he has. Right. So I think they're doing an excellent job with limiting the runs the Mavericks go on, and that is telling me a lot about the series because even if the, the Celtics bottom out in threes, the difference between the Rockets and the Celtics is Golden State's defense was really like that. Yeah. The Mavericks' defense is really good, but right. it's not that. And they're not getting – they're not mi- making unrealistic shots. They're right. just making open threes. Right. So if your assumption is they're going to stop making open threes, yeah, right, right. I'll let you have that. Right. And, but and, I, I but, wanted to go to Stunner's point about yeah. JT and Jalen Brown and ask – and not ask, but with Jalen Brown, as aggressive as he has been, I believe JT – is really the driving force for their offense yes. right now. And that is what people are missing. They're, JT is shooting bad, but yes. that happens in the finals. Right. We got spoiled with Braun, bro. Yeah. Niggas is not in the final shooting 52%, 55% yeah. every year. Yeah, like that's that's some, hard to do. That shit is nuts. That's hard to do. That's, that's nobody's doing that. Like, that's some all-time, one, two, three, all-time yeah. type shit to do. Most superstars Shout get in the finals and shoot five, six uh, percentages below what they usually yeah. shoot. So, JT shooting 43, 44% from the floor yeah. is not a big deal to me because of exactly what he said. Yeah. He is generating every almost every offensive possession they have. Right. Every time he gets two feet in the paint or two people with um, two feet within 12 feet, yeah. uh, free throw line extended, he is creating a good shot right. every single time. And he's limiting his turnovers, and he's not settling for three. Yeah. The seven threes he shot last night, I think five of them were good shots. Right. So I can't be mad that you just miss them. So I love the game JT played. I, JT game one, I think he was a little timid, but his playmaking was fine. Last yeah. night, I think he played an amazing game. He just shot bad. Yeah. I – the media wants it to be a story there. So yeah. they're trying to just force something. But I think 
Bro, it's just the way the team is built. It's yeah. built for Jalen Brown to go off for 30 when Jason Tatum is guarded, getting guarded right. like it is. I, I definitely agree, and I'll speak from the JT hater side of the coin. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he had a nigga set in good screen. Salute. Like, <laughs> he, the Mavs missed 15 straight shots. Yes, he has 11 rebounds. Like, yeah, he is definitely playing a good floor game, but to compare it, because we all watch football, it's like, man. Brock Purdy, 14 for 14. Like, yes, he's playing good. <laughs> but, like, these niggas around him, it's like the, the viewership came out for the finals. And, of course, a lot, a lot of people are illegally streaming it. But, like, it's still low even for, like, the viewership. And I was my, my dad is always, like, talking about the business side of it. And I was like, it doesn't feel like a superstar, superstar. That drives ratings. It feels like superstar Luka, great team Celtics. And they're going to, like, you, it's not the same – Draw. It's not the same draw. It's like, all right, he's playing a great floor. Like, salute. Like, and it, it, I don't think Jalen Brown is better than Jason Tatum because if Jalen Brown was being guarded like Jason Tatum, it'll be it, it would be way worse for him just because he can't create. I think the biggest thing is what y'all are saying. I, I think you said it earlier, can the White stay in front of him? Yeah. And that is the biggest problem the Mavericks is having. They can't stay in front of anybody. No. The Celtics are going to rotate when they need to, and the Warriors were good at just rotating when you need to, but the Mavericks have to rotate every play. And they have to overcompensate. They're overhelping so much. Literally, yeah. because every play you're getting beat. So now the rotation that should be solid, I'm rushing to get over here because yeah. I know he's going to beat you. It's been 100 fly by threes. Like, yeah. pump fake, step over, yeah. three-point. It's been 100 of those. Yeah. Uh, something else I wanted to bring up is – and we kind of had this started this conversation last week about the change in the NBA and how the whole let's make a splash move this summer and have yeah. a championship team built overnight is not happening. That's not how the NBA right. is going to work anymore. Right. You're going to have to build this shit the yeah. correct way. Are you going to have to go get a super? You're going to have to be blessed with a superstar and go get six, seven really good role players. Right. That also is going to bring back parity, what we've seen in the past six years in the finals. Uh, this will be the what, sixth new finals champion yeah. in the six, past six years. We're going to continue to see that because been back, yeah. it's back to the styles makes fight. Right. And I think this playoff run is hilarious because – Minnesota was be built to beat Denver. Right. Just want to make this point. Dallas was built to beat Minnesota. Right. And Boston is built to beat Dallas. And just Boston was same. built to beat Dallas. And Denver is built to beat Boston. Yep, yep. And it's just like this finals winner is literally just who made it through the gauntlet yeah. and who, who ran into the to the matchup they couldn't overcome. Like, right. And I think that is very important to mention in this. Is like, yo. Is Denver beat to beat? Is Denver beat? In awesome. my opinion, yes. Jokic, yeah. In my opinion, yes, because of what Jokic would do for Denver's offense. I think – I. What would Drew and, De and Derek White do to, do to Jamal Murray? No, but that, that's why I think they're built to beat Boston because they can decentralize Drew and Derek White. You can take them out of the game better than Dallas can because you can run your offense through Jokic. But what I'm saying is we've seen the way Minnesota guarded uh, Derek White and Drew. Yeah. Well, you I mean, mean we seen the way Minnesota guarded uh, Jamal Murray. How would Boston? You, you don't think they would give him? So trials? no, I agree. So okay, let me rephrase what I said. Boston has a team to beat. Bo I mean, Denver, Denver has, has a team, team to, to beat, beat Boston. Boston. Okay. Right. Not necessarily they're built, built to okay, do it. Right, That's a, that you. was the wrong way to phrase yeah. that. But what I'm saying with Jokic is he starts their offense in the middle of the court. Yeah. So the way. You're guarding him. He's starting the offense in the middle of the court at the free throw line. Right. Luca's starting the offense at 36 feet with the whole defense staring at him. Yeah. Right. That's a completely different style of guarding. Mm -hmm. And Boston don't have a big to fuck with Jokic. Right. So I think where I think the series would have gotten shaky is Jokic don't got that Luca mindset, that Kobe in him, yeah. where I'm going to just go score 40 and there's nothing y'all going to be able to do. He don't got the he, certified tweaker. He don't got that in him yeah. yet. And it took a while for Braun to develop that. Braun didn't always have that in him unless he really just got mad or something. But right. Jokic wouldn't be able to be stopped, and they would have to send so many doubles, it would just bleed to so many open shots for Denver. And that is what I think. I think this would have been more of a series. Denver and Boston would have been in a, a six, seven game series of what team is making the most shots. I don't think any either one of the teams defensively would have been able to stop each other because I don't think Denver would have been able to stop Boston either, by the okay. way. Because right. the way they're putting a Luka in a lot of action in the pick and roll, they yeah. would have done the Jokic. That's yeah. how you said they Boston is 
okay with getting the best shot every single time down. They're also okay with running the same thing until it don't work yeah, anymore like right. Brian used to do. And those two things, that would have been a better finals to me than this would have been just because I, I think this is I, a little I, And I'm going to say... Hi.